welcome once again to Crazy Comics and Stories. It's me, your charming and delightful old Uncle Rap Bastard. And at the other end of the series of tubes and wires is Joe Crazy Writer. How you doing today, Joe? I got second of it. I was doing a minute. Ah. Oh. You know, it's 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 true. Oh. oh, excuse me a second. Are you eating a bit of honey or something? Oh. Uh, you you can't eat a marathon bar fast. You actually oh. found a marathon bar somewhere? I well actually I found the modern day equivalent. Cadbury makes curly whirly. Curly it, whirly. Yeah, I know. What I, you'd think they came up with a better name. <laughs> but it's essentially a a very a smaller version of a marathon bar. I remember those things being like what, a foot long and at least it's a half an inch or maybe an inch wide. And the, these things, let's let's take a look at the official cray measure here. Ah, I better use a tape measure instead. By there, the way, there is a marathon bar. They are a little under eight inches and maybe uh, maybe an inch across. So, and it, it's more soft caramel rather than the harder caramel that marathon bar. The guy I bought it from actually. Uh, actually knew what I was talking about, so I, I, apparently I'm as old as he is, so that was cool. But there I did is, find the, Joe, there actually is a marathon bar that is put out by Snickers. <clears throat> did you know that? No, I didn't. We should get some. No, that's an uh, energy bar. Oh, not the same. No, it's because the marathon bar was caramel that looked like it was just, you know, like ropes bunch of ropes tied together and covered in chocolate. But no, the new marathon bar is uh, you, you eat it so that, you know, you could run a marathon because it's basically it's an energy bar made by Snickers. So an MRE. Chewy no, it, it's like okay. if you want to look like you're having something healthy, but really you just want a candy bar that costs twice as much. Caramel nut resin. Yeah, yeah, you can get them <laughs> all over the place. Not the same. We need We need the old classics back. Yeah, now they're called the Curly Whirly. Curly Whirly by Cadbury. I just Cadbury. looked it up. It's, uh, you can order it at oldtimecandy.com. Yeah. Well, I happened to find mine at the Irish Fest that was downtown, but I'll talk more about that when we get to geeking. I'm trying to find out when the Marathon Bar went. Ah! Joe, do you know when the Marathon Bar was discontinued? I would say 79. Nope, 1981. Oh, so I was close. It's, it's it was around in that great period. In shape, but it didn't weigh more than standard candy bars at the time. It uh, was introduced in 1973, and then discon- it didn't even last ten years. Nope, nope. And there was even a coupon in comics you could you know tear out for a fifteen cents good for one marathon bar. Well, there's a lot of marathon the Clark pack. bars ads in uh, 70s comics depress me because a lot of those candy bars are candy bars that I still want to buy. Zagnut, yeah. Milkshake. Do you remember the Milkshake candy bar? I remember 7-Up, but I don't remember yep. Milkshake. I probably... Milkshake was kind of a malted chocolate candy bar. It was chocolate covered and then malted chocolate uh, foam, like... It was like the inside of a uh, uh, Three Musketeers, except it was malted chocolate. Yummy. So by now, if you have any of those left, uh, the malt has probably turned it into beer. <laughs> they so still have the Payday Bar. When I was a kid, you see, I was not a huge chocolate person. My favorite candy bar was the Payday Bar. Everybody loves Payday. do 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 and, and now that I live here in Minnesota, I don't buy the payday bar anymore because the uh, salted nut roll is the exact same thing, but like twice the size. Yeah, and they and make it, it here. The same. I still have never been over to the Pearson's Candy for a tour. I should do some more touristy stuff. I actually want to drive down and see the uh, Green Giant statue. I haven't done that. I have visited the old Spam Museum. I do want to visit the new one. And besides, you're, you're going to be going on vacation soon, aren't you? Yes, I am. Uh, you it's, uh, see the by the most, time this drops, I will have already come back. Uh, the most visited podcast, or I should say, yes, you're going we are the most the visited most, podcast in America. Yeah, it's going to be a new one. Corey on the road. He, he's 
he's uh, Steph and Dave got to him, and he just like, you know what? I'm going to travel in pod. Although uh, I, I, I'm trying to incite Corey to go visit some comic stores because you'll be within spitting distance of, of a few. No, I, I'm just going to be hiking. Hiking and reading. Yeah, yeah. See, do you see that, folks? When I went and I was touring the country, I made it my business to visit every comic shop within the area. And Corey's going to be, like, right on top of places, including a few that I visited. And he's just, he's not even going to go. Well, he, if they're he, in the city I'm that, staying in, I'll no. go. But I'm not driving all the way to Fargo. Not that far. Jeez. I used to go up there. Every fall, we used to go up in that area of the woods. I've seen so old Boy Scout see. camp in Park Rapids that a, a friend of mine, he worked at it during the summer. So during the fall, they would lease all the cabins and stuff that, like, the counselors and that would stay in. And it was kind of funny because it was hunting season. So as we were hi- hiking through the woods, you'd keep hearing, you know, shots going off in the distance. But uh, now you're making it so I don't want to go. Well, it's summertime. Nobody, nobody hunts in summertime. What's wrong with you? Thank God. But uh, no, uh, but, although uh, a podcast of me driving, if I'm driving by myself, would be awful boring because it's like I'm either listening to the Howard Stern, and then after I've listened to the entire Howard Stern show. By the way, I do need to listen to today's Howard Stern, even though I missed it because he interviewed Dave Letterman. Ooh, he's coming back, you know. Yes, I'm very excited about that. That was one of my geekings. But uh, I'll listen to the Howard Stern, and then I'll flip over and listen to old time radio. And when I get tired of old-time radio, I flip over to the uh, Underground Garage station. And um, if I need to recharge my phone because I'm using it for a GPS, I will throw in a CD or two and charge the phone because the satellite radio needs to plug into the cigarette lighter. Does anybody actually use a cigarette lighter for cigarette lighters anymore? You can usually tell in a used car if they did. Because the last two cars I bought, the uh, cigarette lighter thing, they don't even have the little thing that you push in that heats up and then it pops out. They don't even have that part of it, which, you know, I'm okay with. But still, you know, if I was smoking, I'd feel like they were, you know, ripping me off. Think about that, Joe. Joe smoking was so ubiqu- Smoking in your car was so ubiquitous that they actually built a lighter into the car for you to smoke. I remember I remember. And my remember. parents smoked constantly. Yeah, yeah. Mine, mine did a little bit, but not much. So uh, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the catalog. Sears? I thought they went out of business. No, the... Uh, I used to work there. There were a lot of things. They haven't got out catalog. of business if yet. Had, if I had, no, the catalog's gone. If well, I the catalog's had, gone, yeah. If I had... A, bought some of the things out of that catalog and saved them, I, I could retire. I could finance this here podcast. I don't think you could pay enough for to keep me in pie. Yes. You you underestimate the type of things they had. No, I've got the new catalog, Joe. Do, do you have it there? I thought New Earth went out of business. Sinister Cinema and Armchair Fiction. There we go. You said you wanted to talk about the uh, the, the, the catalog, so I, I grabbed this. Uh, Bella Lugosi, Shadow of Chinatown. A uh, Hey, look at that. There's a comic book called Backdoor Husband. When your man's it's... away, you can count on Backdoor Husband. Oh, wait. You want to talk about things like that. Let's go to the exploitation section of, uh, of the Sinister Cinema catalog. Shanty Tramp. Let's see, I'll read up about Shanty Tramp. A sleazy evangelist puts a move on a small town Shanty Tramp. She then makes a move on a local black kid, which later gets him killed after her drunken pappy walks in on them. The confrontation between her and pappy, after he learns it wasn't really that she started it, is unforgettable. She soon goes crawling back to the sleazy evangelist. Crawling back to an evangelist. See, that's your problem. You should have become an evangelist. You'd have women dripping off you. Here you go. A Fraulein's in Uniform from 1973. used to complain when I had my exploitation films. No, women in prison. Ah, Girl on a Chain Gang. Which I still have downstairs somewhere. 
Ooh, here we go. I may have, I may need to order this. The topless story. Five minutes to love. That sounds like Joe's life. Ordered to love. Oh, you meant the comic catalog previews? No, not necessarily. It says listen, right on the cover. I could listen to you know you know we used to have a friend that listened to us read romance comics while we were standing at Gran- Granite City Comics. You know I could sit here and listen to you read these descriptions all night long. <laughs> Maybe I'll uh, pick out one or two every week. Uh, previews, yourself, I'm easy. Previews actually says on the cover the comic shops catalog, and it is about the size of a Sears catalog. Uh maybe half the size. Talk Wait. to my mailman friends. Believe me, every time Sears catalog came to town, they'd be like, "Yeah, the catalogs are here again." We always had the Sears catalog. We got it delivered every year. I don't think we ever ordered a single thing mail order. I know for a while, one of the things that started is Sears decided not everybody gets a Sears catalog. You had to buy them unless you had ordered things out of them, or if you ordered enough through Sears or bought things, uh, they would give it to you automatically. And oh my God, you thought you would have thought we asked for your firstborn that people would rather give that up than pay. You know, you pay five dollars for a Sears catalog, and then you get yourself a five dollars certificate, good towards at first your first order in the catalog. But then, as Sears became aware that the catalog was dying, they'd make it five dollars anything in the Sears store. So, and I, you know, to this day, I still wonder about that because I mean, they made when I was working there. You're talking this is like, see, I got my first job there seventy nine, and I mean, they were making $4 billion in sales, but their costs were almost $4 billion. And I was like, wow, how the hell did that happen? You know, you, you think, I mean, Sears was like the original Amazon in its day. I mean, nobody could touch them in terms of delivering stuff. There's stories in World War II about how, like, patent or somebody needed parts for a tank and couldn't get it through the military, so he ordered them through Sears catalog, and they sent them up to him. But, uh, again, it just it got to be so much that uh, eventually all those catalog places kind of disappeared. Sears, Wards went first, and then Sears closed their catalog. J.C. Penney's, I don't know if they have a catalog anymore. Catalogs now are, like you said, they're very specific, very... Narrow. I mean, I got one the other day for JP Specialty catalogs. They do uh, retailer displays. I used to order quite a bit from them when I had the hot comics. And I still get things from them. I still get the best catalog ever printed, Joe. And I order from it at least two or three times a year. Ever printed or always printed? Ever. J. Peterman. Now, people thought that Jay Peterman was just a bit on the Seinfeld show. Nope, it's a real catalog. Now, um, Peterman himself, he sold the company in the 90s when it was really, really hot under Seinfeld to a uh, retail chain who then started building Jay Peterman stores, but they expanded faster than the sales and their money could keep up, so it went under. And then after the guy who played Peterman on Seinfeld won Dancing with the Stars, I forget his name, but that actor and Jay Peterman bought the the copyright to the name back and restarted the catalog. Well, since you're no longer the best dressed man in comics, why do you even bother? Because I still like to dress well. Corey likes to dress up. Well, I want to look good when I'm at work. Why? They'll just throw up on you anyways. Other job. The other job. Oh, sure. They're not worth getting dressed up for. (sighs) Oh, no. No. You wear T-shirts and jeans. (laughs) Preferably T-shirts that you don't give a shit about. Uh, (laughs) Kind of like that NCBA dyed one that I got on now. I had a shirt. You know, had a T-shirt. You know, it was inexpensive t-shirt. You know, it was comic book related, but it was about 20, 25 bucks. And I was there one day and one of the clients got really angry and grabbed my shirt and pulled and just ripped it right off. And what it says in the uh, in the employee handbook is that if a client destroys your clothing, the company will replace it. 
They did. They bought me another T-shirt. It, one of those, uh, the, the T-shirt that comes in the bag, three for three for five dollars with the pocket. And then they save the other two for the next time it happens. Pretty much. No, uh, Peterman. Uh, the thing about the J. Peterman catalog is it just that the clothes are really, really well made, and that they basically it's newly made vintage clothes. They get um, old patterns, and Peterman himself was kind of a world traveler, and he would go to, you know, when Joe, when you think vintage clothing, you think you know the last twenty, thirty years. You think from Goodwill. He would buy stuff from the 17 and 1800s and then take it to his people and say, how did they make this? Aha, I am travel. So, um, here's the description of one of the shirts. This is why the J. Peterman catalog is the best catalog in the world. The older you become, the more you know. There is no... There is no beating experience, the ability to navigate the ebbs and flows of human nature. Master that and everything else falls into place, such as finances, your third marriage, predicting the harsh winter, or a perilously dry summer. Being ahead of the curve is why people seek your advice on things you know nothing about, such as the burden of good common sense combined with uncommonly good taste. The silk and cashmere polo, 55% silk, 45% cashmere. Guys like Holden, Cooper, and Grant wore these, and we believed everything they said, and they still reside on best dress lists. Six gray shell buttons at the center front pocket, with reinforced stitched at the bottom of placket. Ribbed of spread collar and sleeve cuffs. Side vents. Wear with jeans or a sports coat. With both or neither, it's all excellent. Imported. So do you need to go change your pants after reading that? Yeah. I thought so. <laughs> There'll be a pause in the podcast here. You won't notice anything. We're back. <laughs> He's still chuckling. God dang, i got to get me one of these catalogs. I did uh, check out the website. Just go to the website. And the first thing that pops up is they'll give you 20% off uh, if you sign up for their email list. So you got that going for you. And you can always next. go to the sale department or the last chance department. Uh, but the thing that I, I enjoy most on the uh, – out of their clothing is the J. Peterman shirt, the actual J. Peterman shirt. It's based on here. I'll pull it up here because they changed the the pattern is the same, but the fabric they use changes. It's a 99% Thomas Jefferson, 1% Peterman. Thomas Jefferson dislikes stuffy people, stuffy houses, stuffy societies, so he changed a few things: law, gardening, government, architecture. Of the thousand castles, mansions, and chateaus you can walk through today, only Monticello, only Jefferson's own mansion, makes you feel so comfortable you want to live in it. I think you will feel the same about his 18th century shirt. Classic, simple, livable. I have four of them. They are the most wonderful shirts I own. And when they're on sale, because normally they go for like about 50 bucks each, but when they go on sale, you can get them for $20. So I usually just, oh, what are the new fabrics they use? Oh, black plaid, this plaid, that, that. there you go. But uh, we're, we're not here to talk about the fashion. We are uh, 20 <laughs> minutes into this year's yeah. podcast. Yep, I know. And uh, we've talked movies and fashion. Yeah, we did. Why, well, Marathon Bar, too. Oh, yeah. And none of these, none of these are even going to be in our sponsorship. So, Speaking of sponsors... That's right, here at the Solitaire Rose Radio Network, we have ads, and our first sponsor is me. That's right, your charming and delightful old Uncle Rap Bastard. I have my first book out with Dangerous Dan Moore. It's the first hundred strips of our online web strip, Worldwide News, the story of the lowest-rated cable news network. And you can get yourself a copy with commentary, with all sorts of extras, with uh, signatures and everything. Just email Dan over at lordshadowflame at gmail.com. Our top sponsor, who's been with us since day one, is DreamHost. DreamHost.com. You need yourself a website, and DreamHost.com is the number one web host in the whole known universe. Just head over to DreamHost.com, put in the code CRAZY, K-R-A-Y-Z, get $20 off your first year. How can you beat that? Our other sponsor is Graze, G-R-A-Z-E.com. Healthy snacks for a healthy lifestyle. 
just head over to Gray's, put in the code C-O-R-Y-S-3-R-5-P. Your first and fifth box are free. You can get them weekly. You can get them bi-weekly. You can get them monthly. You can just order a whole bunch of them. It's great stuff to keep you away from the vending machine at work. Now, if you would like to leave a comment for any of the podcasts that we do, we'd love those. Go ahead and email us at solitairerosenetwork at gmail.com, or you can call 952-856-0519. Operators are standing by. Okay, it's just a place that will record your calls, but we'll play them on the air. We'll answer your questions. We love getting feedback. Tell us what you think. Ask a question. Suggest a topic. Be a guest. Send us your stuff. Solitaire Rose Network at gmail.com. If you would like to advertise on any of the Solitaire Rose radio shows, you can. Just email us at Solitaire Rose Network at gmail.com. Subject advertising. Thanks. Wow, we got that out of the way early, didn't we? Cool. Now, normally we would go right into, uh, Joe, what's going on on the eBay, but no, we haven't even got to our topic yet. Joe's uh, easily distracting me. I am. Hey, look, 17 Spider-Girl cosplayers. Whoa. Hey, now. I, although, I'll be honest, I prefer the uh, Gwen, uh, uh, Spider-Gwen. Kind of got a thing for Spider-Gwen. Speaking of Spider-Gwen, I have the uh, previews, the comic shop catalog in my hand, Joe. Do you have one? It's on the floor. You should pick it up. Nah, I got what I have right here on my... Notebook, because I have to, you know, flip back and forth between several months for those particular publishers that are not kind enough to tell us, yeah, this is a bi-monthly book, or I will publish it again whenever I feel like it. I tell you, as I'm going through my vast accumulation of crap, the number of times I run across things like, and I'm not issue talking about... Issue one, like, issue two, issue yeah, five, issue yeah. nine... Or, or I mean, you know, I'm not even talking about like, you know, last week you gave such a roaring endorsement for shirtless bear fighters. So I ordered number five, picked up number one and two at the source, went with a second print, of course. Just did, you read did you not read them? Did you read them? Not yet. Oh, so oh, did good. you see Spider Man yet? I'll, I'll okay. be out of town this weekend. That's okay, and I, I you know, I'm, I'm blowing out all those other Spider Man, you know, brand new day in my ass. But uh, no, there. I, you know, maybe I'll make a list of of publishers. Like there was there was one that just said spread, and for some reason I got issue one and four, and it's a, it's a uh, it must Image have been book. a series. Yeah, and I don't know why I didn't get the other two. What's more baffling is when I get a series like the uh, the new Thor. Well, actually, it was the before Crisis. No, not Crisis. What was that? Dumb t- oh, Seeker Wars, you know, where they did a bunch of numbering and then quit and everything came back with a one, and now they're doing legacy numbering. Ugh. Anyways, you you remember Maggie Thompson from Comic Buyer's Guide when she used to talk about trying to categorize and catalog these things for their computer? Yes. How multiple starts like that would give her just the biggest headache. You know, I'm sitting here trying to put these things in some type of a chronological order and separate them by... S- by a series, so that if somebody comes through my books, oh, and by the way, my books will be at Fall Comic Con, the One Day Wonder, October 7th, 2017, at the Minnesota State Education Building. Because you need to get educated. And I, I, you, you want some uh, off the topic hot news? Sure. I Pat have some off the topic hot news. Pat well. is going to be one of their special guests. Oh, cool. I like I've that. Heard. Yeah, I already talked with him, and he's going to do me a commission already. So I'm looking forward to that. Wow. Um, I, I also and have as some far news. as I know, their their website has not been updated. MCBAComicCons.com. I know they're getting tons of requests for who's going to be here, who's going to how can you do a dealer table? Uh, you can, you know, and it will, both uh, you and I will be gone, and this will be over with by the time it drops. But they're going to be at the Fan Fest, so you can always Minnesota Fan Fest, which is that big show down at the River Center trying to out Wizard Wizard World. It looks like it's it's going pretty good. And uh they actually gave the M C B A table. So, you know, if if, if you are, are catching this through the the fast time stream and you're it's not too late, go down there and you can ask them all them questions you're sending them emails on. 
How can I get a table? Who the guests going to be? What should I do with this French fried potato? I like them French fried taters. I like taters. Um, one, one, one thing that will be announced at Minnesota Fan Fest and uh, next week, or yeah, we, I don't know. The times are all messed up. Adam Vermillion, who does uh, panels and pizza, is uh, wrapping up his time in Minnesota. And will be uh, will not be at uh, FallCon. Yeah, too bad because he could he could have nabbed Pat. Well, the problem is he's uh, going to be living in Iowa. No, uh, it's not that far away. He's got a he's got reasons he can't make it that have to do with the move there, and I'm not going to get into it. But uh, if you were going there to see Adam, uh, he's not there. So if somebody I'll, wants to set up and do can. podcasting there, there's a free table. Tell him the same thing. Yeah, it's not that far away. <laughs> well, I'll cut this out. Uh, he will be taking care of his daughter that weekend. Yeah. No, no I figured. Yeah. Um, but, uh, oh, so uh, he's going to be wrapping up his uh, Minnesota run and moving down to Iowa and then interviewing Iowa creators. And my first thought is, there, there are Iowa creators. But then again, he's gotten like 150 episodes out of people here in Minneapolis. Yeah. Including you. Yeah, I'm coming up. You know, I don't, I don't know what the hell I'm going to decide. They decide to do it when I'm leaving town. They've oh. been talking about this for 15 years. And then the <laughs> one time, they okay, Joe's out of town. This day, let's That's do it. The day we he planned it the day you left. You fanboy, better hope I'm not on duty when you get to Amsterdam, because you're going to need surgery after my rough treatment by TSA. Be the most excitement I've had in a few years. Um, Joe, what do you? What you, you're looking at the dark horse? You jump? You, know, you buying anything from there's dark a horse app for that? With any dark uh, horse? Uh, yeah, I've got that app. Most of the women on it are uh, wearing their uh, wedding dresses, and I I don't want to date women who put up their uh, their dating pics in wedding dresses. Joe, what are you ordering? Only the end of the world again. It's one of them uh, hard covers by uh, this one's Neil Gaiman and P. Craig Russell. So, yeah, yeah, it's a fantasy world blending the worlds of H.P. Lovecraft, Rogers. How do you say that? Zelazny. Zelazny, thank you. Zelazny. No, see, I can't do that. Uh, it's a adjuster who sets up shop in Innsmouth, only discovered that the world may be ending and what the instrument of destruction is, a werewolf. So I may actually, once I read this, and if I decide to keep it or not, that might be my gift to my brother-in-law because he really digs werewolf stories. So it's a duel. And yeah, it's worry. based on a Neil Gaiman short story, so Neil's not scripting it. It's much like American Gods, where Neil Gaiman plots it, and then P. Craig Russell scripts it. Well, they did that with the, uh, what was that one on a, about a troll under the bridge? Oh, troll yeah. under the bridge. You know, and I actually found the short story in one of those uh, black and white reprints that I think Caliber Dumb did. And then they, it was kind of neat to see that version and then the fleshed out version that him and Colleen Doran did. Uh, for me, uh, Groove, Play of the Gods, number four. Got to get me some Groove. Um, one thing that uh, I already have this, but they are doing the... Dark Horse is doing the EC archives now. They're the ones who have that since uh, Russ Cochran couldn't really afford to keep doing them. And they are doing the um, issues 7 through 12 of Panic. Joe, do you know what Panic was? Uh, wasn't it a funny magazine? Yeah, it was the official ripoff of Mad. Oh, because, I didn't know they uh, had an official one. Yes, when Mad started, um, there were tons of comics that ripped them off who would do parodies. Uh, there was a book a few years ago that actually printed like sample stories from a lot of them. Um, I think at one point there were like five or six that were done by Stan Lee over at uh, Atlas. And uh, actually, one of the ones that I picked up when we were out going to comic shops, they had a reprint of all three issues of Get Lost by Ross Andrew and Mike Esposito, which was uh, so good that uh, William Gaines sued him. 
<laughs> but Panic was their official knockoff of it. Um, Mad was uh, edited by Harvey Kurtzman. Panic was edited by Al Feldstein, who was the editor on the horror comics and the crime comics and things like that. And uh, Panic actually made uh, Kurtzman a little irritated. He felt that Panic was cutting into Mad sales, and what what Gaines said is, look, Mad is selling so well, there's so much demand for more. As a publisher, it would be stupid for me not to put out another book, but you have enough trouble getting this thing out on time. <laughs> Al, can, Al can hit his deadlines every month. I need the, basically he was saying, I, I need the cash flow. So issues 7 through 12, it has the same artists as um, Mad did. Jack Davis, Joe Orlando, Wally Wood, Bill Elder. Um, it's not as timeless as Mad was, but it's still pretty funny. And come on, it's Bill Elder. It's Jack Davis. It's Wally Wood. Eventually, don't have, you don't have it, you got to buy it. Eventually, when you move, you're going to discover that your home is no longer made up of actual building materials, but of all these hardcovers and omnibus that you purchase. Hey, I've got the complete EC. I've got all of the uh, Russ Cochran hardcover slipcase DCs. That is the pride of my collection. That was uh, something in 1979 when they announced it. I said, I will own that. And you sold me the last one, the uh, Picto Fiction. Yep. Yep. 2005. Anything else in Dark Horse? Nope. Uh, anything jump out at you at DC? I ordered the Wonder Woman True uh, Amazon trade paperback, which I believe is Jill Thompson. Yes, she won an uh, Eisner for it. Yeah, and uh, other than that, I am pretty much DC free. The only other one that kind of tickled my fancy was the heart. Harley Ivy meet Betty Veronica, one of six, but I decided to pass on that one. So um, one that, that jumped out at me that. was the DC House of Horror. It's a 80-page book for 10 bucks, but it's a bunch of, uh, basically it's, hor- it's uh, horror short stories all written by Keith Giffen, drawn by different artists. And uh, then on the page next to it, Dead Man Number 1 by Neil Adams, Joe... It's got a glow-in-the-dark cover. Ooh, yay. Yay, they're coming back. They're coming back, baby. And uh, hardcover-wise, well, the, the trade paperback and hardcover-wise, um, Aquaman, the Atlantis Chronicles by Peter David, who uh, for 20 years now has asked DC to reprint that, that miniseries. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that, and I'm like, you know what? If they actually do a soft cover, I may pick it up, but uh, I decided against that one. I bought it. I don't have the original ones. I bought it when it was individual issues, and it was a really good story, but the thing that I'm buying for the hardcover is Esteban Morato's art was off the charts wonderful, and that was on the shitty paper. I can't imagine how good it's going to look on, you know, in this deluxe version. It'll just be beautiful to look at. Um, And then the rest, there's a Challengers of the Unknown by Jack Kirby trade paperback. I don't need to buy that because I have the Challengers of the Unknown archives and the Challengers of the Unknown uh, showcase. So I've already bought those stories twice. I think that's enough. Oh, some Kirby fan you are. I know. Um, and the Teen Titans Omnibus, if I didn't already have those stories as both comics and as archives, I'd be ordering that too because uh, it goes up through, uh, what, issue 40. So it's right up to the Judas contract. Yeah, and that's where uh, I think I'm, I'm at with the... Uh, uh, the trades that they've been doing. Yeah. Because I think there's been three volumes so far. But one of the things about the new Teen Titans, as I did a reread of it, because really the book falls apart. I would think, to me, the book falls apart after that five-part story when they started the Baxter book. When George Perez came back and did that five-part story of the Teen Titan, new Teen Titans versus Trigon. 
And then, to my mind, the series just kind of took a stumble. And a lot of people said it was because Perez left. And I think there's some valid points to that, because Wolfman always said the, the small human moments were the ones that George Perez added. But it was also, every character in the first issue had something they were dealing with. Um, Starfire was a runaway slave. Um, Changeling had to deal with the fact that the Doom Patrol had died. Uh, it, it, Robin was dealing with the fact that he wasn't really a kid sidekick anymore and he wanted his own identity. Raven had to deal with her demonic father. Cy, uh, Cyborg had to deal with the fact that he'd lost, you know, is he still human since he's mostly machine? Everybody had an issue. And as Wolfman did the stories, each person's issue got resolved. And I think once he went through all of that, he didn't have any further issues to drive the stories. So it just kind of became, crap, what do I do now? Rather than what you need to do in a melodrama, which is as you're wrapping up one problem for a character, you introduce a second problem before that first problem is resolved, so that, oh, now the character's going to do this, and now the character's going to do this. Kind of like in a soap opera. You know, when you watch a soap opera, if there's the story that the character's going through, they start introducing the next story a couple months before they resolve the story they're in. Wolfman never had a second act. Subplots. Yeah. It's like, oh, everything, everybody's in a good place now. Uh, now what do we do? Uh, also, there's uh, somebody asked on, on on the face staff, somebody asked about the early Wonder Woman stories. If you're interested in the early Wonder Woman stories, there is Wonder Woman, the Golden Age Trade Paperback, Volume 1. It's um, 400 pages for 25 bucks. So if you want to read about early Wonder Woman, there it is. And somebody asked me what I thought, and I, I've always disliked those early Wonder Woman stories. Not because of the bondage, not because they're just bad stories poorly drawn. I can't get through them. I've tried. I've tried reading them. They're just, they're crude and they're boring and nothing happens and they just, they don't look good and they're, they're no fun. You know, the early Batman stories are drawn crudely, but at least it's, you know, Batman versus vampires. And the early Superman stories have a wonderful charm to them, but the Wonder Woman stories are just not good. And uh, one one other thing I want to point out, Joe, could you could you turn the page to to uh, one thirty four for the Vertigo? I'm turning to the Vertigo. Vertigo. Okay. Uh, for uh, Vertigo, we've got uh, two pages. That's all the uh, comic series they're doing, and yep. two of them are mini series that have wrapped up with with these issues. Well, they still got the books they're banging out. The only, no, wait, I take that back. The American Way still has two issues to go. But the only continuing comic they're doing now is Astro City. Yep. What is it about Astro City that it keeps killing comic book companies? Yeah. Curses. <laughs> um, they're also doing a reprint of the Invisibles if you don't have the Invisibles. These are wonderful. They're repackaging them. Um, they're thicker. So it's like, um, it used to be four trade paperbacks for the first 25 issues. Now it's just two. So if you've never read The Invisibles and you're listening to this podcast, go buy The Invisibles. I'll explain it to you. It's okay. Anything else, Jim? Nope. Anything in IDW jump out at you? Uh, a couple things that I've blabbed about before. The uh, Star Trek New Visions, a John Byrne doing Photoshop with uh, stuff. Uh, what pain it is to drown. Uh, Time and Vine number four mini series from Tom uh, uh, Zaylor. Guy loving capes. Ah. Doing, you know, we were talking about romance comics. He knows how to do them. And uh, from Bo Smith, they're doing the Winona Earp season zero number five. I like to pick that up and read along with that. And if I ever get a chance, one of these days I'll actually watch the show on television. Um, the new Atomic Robo miniseries starts up. I've 
gone on and on about Atomic Robo. And uh, there's the new uh, Atomic Robo. I'm excited about that. Um, one of the things they're doing... Oh, look! There's a new comic line. Black Crown. Yeah. It's going to be... Uh, it starts with uh, a series called uh, Kid Lobotomy. And then there's a quarterly that introduces all the characters. And uh, no. No, no, no. Quit doing this. Quit introducing new superhero universes. None of them stay. I don't care who you put on it. No one's interested in a new superhero universe. Just do good books. Just do good comics. Okay? If I um, had the money, I'd buy that uh, Battlestar Galactica, Walt Simonson, it's Treasury proof or whatever they call it, where they supersize the artwork so people can look at it. I was actually going to point out on pages uh, 176 and 177, um, unlimited money, I would be buying the Gene Colan Tomb of Dracula oh, artist. That, Kubert Tarzan art. Um, uh, Joe Kubert's tour, hmm. which is a caveman story he did in the 50s, and then he brought back and did at Marvel's Epic Line. Um, Joe Kubert's Enemy Ace, The Best of DC War. These are phenomenal books. Artists are the ones who buy these, by the way. Yeah. It's funny when these come out. Most of the artists on my Facebook page are like, Oh my God, I'm broke. I need to do more commissions because all these artist editions came out. But if I had, you know, if I had unlimited money, I'd be buying that Gene Colan uh, Tomb of Dracula artist edition. It's, uh, what, 125 bucks. How many pages? Who cares? 144 pages. Um, the, I wish, one of the things I wish is that they had Gene Colan's pencils. Because later on, um, they reprint, they did, um, they've done a few comics in the 80s where they've just printed directly from Gene Colan's pencils. And they're just beautiful. Just the way he would use the pencil for shading. Um, the Inkers did great jobs, and Tom Palmer did a phenomenal job on Tomb of Dracula. But, oh, to see Gene Colan's original pencils for that, and him, you know, basically, I watched him draw when he was at the convention here. And he would, you know, draw traditionally with the pencil, and then he'd move the pencil to the side, and move it up or down based on how dark he wanted the shadows. And you would see him just kind of move that pencil down just a little bit to get a little darker, or move it up just a little bit to make it a little lighter as he's doing it. It's so precise and almost scientific. And in, um, well, a series he did with uh, Don McGregor. He did two of them. He did uh, Ragamuffins, which was printed from the direct pencils. And then at DC, he did uh, two uh, detective stories, two Nathaniel Dust detective stories. And uh, Don says that they're going to be reprinting um, Ragamuffins soon. But all oh, those Nathaniel Dusk, they're just printed directly from the pencils. The problem is they, they did coloring over it. I would love it if they said, we're just going to print it black and white from the pencils. <laughs> so really, that's kind of about it from IDW. Oh, my God, are there a lot of uh, My Little Pony comics and you know, stuff like that. So somebody's buying them. Oh, yeah. I know when I go even back... Out board games, Joe. And I look at stuff online... You know, to figure out is it worth something or not. The ones that tend to stay up in value are the ones, the big ones, like the seven ninety nine, nine ninety nine books. Because most of the time, I think if a parent or somebody's buying these for their kid, they're going for the cheaper comic. They're not buying uh, the uh, the more expensive book. But you know, if I had uh, the comic store, these would be the type of things you'd want to stock. Put them babies in the window. Yep. Let, let people know you got them. Image. What's jumping out at you about Image? Ah, uh, Crosswind, Mage Book One. Although I'm torn on this one because if they come out with an omnibus later, I'm going to be very upset. Uh, Ringside 13, Savage Dragon 228, the previous mentioned Shirtless Bear Fighter 5, and Youngblood 6. And I don't know if I'll continue with Youngblood, although I am enjoying it so far. No, um, I want to point out... I want to point out a few. First is Paper Girls Book One. We reviewed Paper Girls. That's the one um, 
set in the 80s, done by Michael K. Vaughn and drawn by Cliff Chang. And uh, book one hardcover re- has the first ten issues for thirty four ninety nine. dollars a little bit bigger. Um, I really like the format that they're using for that. I have been reading it as a digital, and I will probably buy these as the hardcovers. Um, what's the other book that jumped out? There's another reprint. Oh, Joe, um, I, I, you didn't mention it, the new uh, Walking Dead Omnibus, number seven. I buy compendiums, son. Oh, okay. Compendiums are even bigger than this? Uh, they contain usually 49 to 50 issues. Okay, because this is... Uh, but they're heavy, unlike the uh, Cerebus phone books. Yeah, this is a deluxe hardcover that reprints 24 issues for 100 bucks. I couldn't remember if you buy the Omnibus or the, the, the I don't know. But, um, you know, for me, it's the regular image stuff I'm getting. Killer Be Killed, um, Motor Crush, Walking Dead. Um, a lot of the image stuff I'm buying in trades. And Mage number three. Mage number one uh, came out today, Joe. So you should be happy that I that I showed up for this year podcast instead of running to the comic shop to buy it. Oh, the new trade of uh, I Hate Fairyland, Volume 3. That was the other one I was looking for. Reprinting issues 11 through 15. Always love me some Scotty Young. I don't have my Marvel previews. What? It, 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 I, I couldn't find it. Oh, that's okay. Because this is starting. I their, remember there were no omnibuses thing? that I wanted. No, and uh, other in trades, the only thing I really wanted to get was the Avenger by Bendis, Volume Three. Uh, I will probably pick up the Legacy numbering uh, on the Thor just to take a look at it. The Invincible Iron Man because I, I do, although the uh, female Iron Man I stopped buying. I do like Bendis, and I'm curious to see where he's going with this. And of course, the the new series that I'm I'm looking forward to is Punisher: The Platoon, six yes. issue mini series. Garth Ennis is back. We talked about it last week. This is uh, yeah, set it, in Vietnam, waking Punisher in his sixties. Yep. <laughs> Garth Ennis, he don't care. He don't He's care. like the honey badger. He don't care. Nope. Wow, that reference is probably a decade old now. In the Others section. So you get the, these are the, uh, what do they call them in the previews catalog? The, the premier The premier publishers. Publishers. Everybody else is others. But I will point out one thing. At Avatar, they're not doing any of their books. They look like they are blowing out their paperbacks. And for really, really cheap prices, too. So if you're looking to try some good reading, uh, let me just open up their section here. At Avatar, you're there's a lot of stuff out. with or. Warren Ellis, Alan Moore, George Double R. Martin. So all their trades that are normally very expensive, they're going for about five ninety nine. And I'm sorry, it's never a good sign when we don't have any new comics coming out. And hey, here are all our trades. We're selling them for a third of the price, which means yeah. you know they're this fine. trade is five ninety nine, which means the comic shop's paying about three bucks for it. Yeah, they're complete huge collections, and they're blowing them up, blowing out limited inventory, they said. The one I picked up was Anna Mercury Trade Paperback by Warren Ellis and Fasundo Persio. It's a redhead. That's all I care about. <laughs> I was tempted to buy other ones, but I got so many things I haven't read. Uh, you know, just add them to the pile. But if you're looking for some decent reading and you're never quite sure if you want to try them, like I said, just anything that says, uh, I mean, I'd, if I had the bucks, I'd have done one of everything, including Dicks from Garth Ennis and John McCree. I love that. I bought those at regular price. Yeah, those are fun. And, and uh, I mean, I just sold the original series I bought years ago off the Ebays. So, yeah, there's some good stuff in there. So, you know, we, we've seen. But you also want to be a little careful. Because, like, oh, look, here's the Dr. Sleepless uh, trade paperback by Warren Ellis. It, $5.99. Got the first eight issues. Yeah, it ended on a cliffhanger, and he's never gone back to it, and it's been years. Yep. Um, Gravel, I believe he passed it off onto someone else, and they finished the story. 
but you don't want to pick up, oh, here's uh, three trade paperbacks with uh, uh, and, and the story never ended and they're never going to end it. A never ending story. And the other thing you have to look out for is stuff like, okay, here's the uh, Fashion Beast. It says Alan Moore. No, Alan Moore wrote a short story, and um, Anthony, Anthony Johnson and Franco Perco adapted it. So you're saying it's like techno comics all over again? Well, kind of. There's a dated reference. <laughs> they had a shop in the Mall of America with a hand that moved. Yes. Very scary. Very scary. Um, D- Dave Sims got a new comic. Well, that's strange. Strange Cerebus. The first appearance of, uh, let's see here. Reprints online strips from July and August of 2016. So, uh, I did not read the online strip, so I'll be interested to see what this was. So my question I have, in Abstract Studio, Terry Moore is doing Motor Girl, which I've enjoyed. All of a sudden it shows up, oh, it's a 10-issue miniseries. And here's issue 9. Was it planned that way? I don't know. I don't either. See, I'm, I've told the story numerous times. I am not enamored of Terry Moore. I understand why people like his stuff. I feel that as a writer... He pulls too many cheats. He'll write himself into a corner and then make up stuff to get out of it. And when writers do that, in my mind, I can't get into their stuff because I can't. I can't suspend my disbelief. You know, the characters are never really in peril because the writer will. Oh, I screwed up. Ah, here. <laughs> and uh, while I appreciate his talent. He's not someone I follow. Is Echo any different from that? Because I I have not read it. Is the one where I yelled at it. I have not read it. I have it in book form. I haven't read it. Uh, Let's see. I'll look through Action Lab because there are pals. Uh, Is there a new Athena Voltaire? Is there a new Athena Voltaire? Do you know the name of uh, who's the chicken heavy metal with the wings and the big bird she rides? Tar- I, Terana? I, Terana? Yeah, I never read those that run of Heavy Metal or well, saw that movie. The miniseries is coming out, so there's a, oh. a one-shot comic book. Well, I don't know. It, it, it has the potential to be ongoing. Usually they end up being miniseries. So if you liked that character, uh, Heavy Metal's got her in a comic. So there's that. Uh, Archie. Actually, um... American Mythology, the ones who do the Pink Panther, and um, who else do they do? Underdog. Three yeah, they did Underdog. Uh, they did Rocky and Bullwinkle. They are going to be reprinting some Casper the Friendly Ghost. Some of the old Casper the Friendly Ghost. For 20 bucks, it's 144 pages, and it's stuff from the 60s and 70s. Um, I grew up on Harvey Comics. Uh, when I was a kid, I always, always liked the Harvey books and the uh, Disney Duck books before I got into superheroes. So I, depending on, I'm going to wait and actually see this because I, with reprints like this, if they don't have good film, they can look bad. And I don't want to pay 20 bucks for a book that doesn't look good. So if when this comes out, I'm going to go to a shop, take a look. Make sure that it's, you know, not just, hey, we took the uh, comics and put them on the copy machine, and that's our film. <laughs> you sound like the villain. The from guy Red... from uh, Ring of Honor? Nope, from Ring Giant Entertainment, The Villain, oh. written by Neil Adams, William Applegate, with art by Mikhail Berg's Fist, five-issue miniseries. The world's foremost supervillain, John Doe, has fallen in love with the lovely Sarah. Now he decides to become a good guy. But uh, his evil empire didn't get the memo, and uh, they're back threatening the whole world. Suddenly the villain has to become the hero. (sighs) And they say romance comics are dead. So I'll give that a shot. Five issues from uh, Red Giant Entertainment. Mostly uh, because Mr. Adams is involved. Over at Archie, we've got a new uh, Marvel Digest for Thor. 
Buy it. You won't be sore. Ah, ah, ah. They don't tell you what they're reprinting, but if it's Doesn't like matter. the uh, if it's like the Spider-Man reprint, you'll get a classic story, um, a good three-parter from the '70s or early '80s, and then some of the more recent kids' comics, which you know I'm down with. Uh, New uh, horror series, Jughead the Hunger, where Jughead is a werewolf. Yeah. New issue of The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which uh, I cannot remember the last issue when it came out. Um, came out this month. It was in oh, my really? Yeah. Uh, the Archies, an ongoing series about the uh, the band The Archies. Yeah. Too many, too many Archie universes going on. I even decided to stop buying the classic Archie because I mean I'll just buy those big reprint books they got, and uh, that'll, you know, I'll, I'll stick with the current stuff. And again, I wonder if they wrote themselves in a corner now because of what happened in the last couple issues. But I'll stick if I'm going to do a classic. I'll just uh, pick up some of those big books. And. Uh We've got, uh, of course, the, the Archie Digest. There's a new Digest that uh, 128 pages for seven dollars. Meanwhile, if you look up, the uh, Double Digest is uh, 100, 256 pages for the exact same price. See, that's why you buy larger peanut butter in the market instead of the smaller stuff. Sure, you're yes. saving a few pennies, but you're not getting near as much. Right. And uh, you talked about Rugrats over at Boom. Boom. More as an investment than a... I mean, unless you got kids that even... I don't even know if Rugrats is on Nickelodeon anymore. It no. Be, no be it's, everything. it's been off the air for a while. Yeah. yeah. I know they did a... Uh, like an older one where they were like in... in uh, I think... I couldn't tell if they were like grade school or trying to be teenagers or what. But uh, by that time, my kids didn't watch it, so I didn't care. And uh, I didn't care either. You know what uh, series I wanted them to jump forward in time and, and let us know what the characters were like when they were older? Oh, is it Doug. the one with the two redheads that were always experimenting on their brother? No. Oh. Doug! Do you remember? There were three... When Nickelodeon started doing their own cartoons, there were three cartoons. There was Rugrats, there was Ren and Stimpy, and there was Doug. And Doug was the uh, kid who had a lot of daydreams and uh, had a crush on his kind of uh, tomboyish friend, Patty Mayonnaise. And then it moved over to ABC for a couple of years, because it was made by Disney, and then it, they did a movie, and that was kind of the end of it. But I always wanted them to do a series of, oh, here's what Doug was like when he grew up. You know, did, did he become a writer? Did Patty Mayonnaise become a, you know, a, a sport a professional athlete? You know, if we're going to find out what the damn Rugrats are like when they're grown up, why aren't there no more Ren and Stimpy? I heard that. Well, you said Ren and Stimpy. Stinky. Oh, stinky. Dude, uh, he talks. The, the most actually, disappointing thing in the catalog. I went to order Last Girl Standing by Trina Robbins. Could yep. not find it on Discount Comic Book Service site. So, and I went through a couple times and finally just placed my order because it'll be due by the time I get back. So, I did see the women comics, so, you know, the big $100 one you were talking about. Yep, 17 issues. So, I guess it's not as bad. But, it's uh, 17 issues, but still. Damn it. Um, the Battlestar Galactica by Walt Simonson that you mentioned is actually from Dynamite. I know my. And on the other page is actually something that I'm buying, Joe. What's that? It is the Atari Classics Atari Force Trade Paperback. <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> I read that. This is not the um, Atari Force regular comic. These are the never-before-collected uh, never uh, mini-comics that came in your Atari cartridges. But... Hopefully, if this does, you know, I'm going to pick it up because I remember those as being, yeah. But if this sells well, maybe they will reprint Atari Force, which was uh, 
one of my favorite comics of the early 80s. I'm getting something coming in. Oh, we have an S destroyed. Uh Uh-oh. This one's coming from one of our listeners. Which one? Mozik Chong. Ah, he can Inter- send it interrupting in. this here podcast to ask you a question. He must know when we're podcasting. Or Obviously. maybe he's right outside the... Get out of here! Go home! Maybe Damn. he's got one of the keys. I doubt it. D- disappeared in a blue box. I heard a worry and he disappeared. Ask the Strode. Corey, what comic was the first to publish one of your letters of comment? Um, Batman. I don't remember the issue, but it was back when Doug Mensch and Gene Colan were doing the book, and it was the story about Thief of Night, and they did a thing where Thief of Night became Batman. And this was before yeah, everybody and his brother became Batman, but they had, he and Nocturna had broken Batman psychologically so that he could become the Batman, and uh, I could not stop praising it. Cool. Um, and the reason I want more Atari Force, Joe, who drew Atari Force? No idea, because I didn't have an Atari growing up. No, I mean a regular comic that DC put out. I barely remember it. Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. It was ah. the only regular comic series that I can think of where he did a run on the book. Because he did, because he was so busy with the licensing, he would do an issue here and an issue there. But on Atari Force, he drew he drew that book. That's why I want it. I want it. I will call attention to Alternate Comics because they're doing a bunch of comics on newsprint, and they're only pricing them like anywhere from a buck fifty. So I'm picking up a few of the miniseries. Uh, they got one called Mother Russia ending this month, Scrimshaw, Chair, and Trespasser are going one more issue. They're actually bi-monthly, but once I read these, uh, we'll come back to them and uh, let you know if it's worth it. I think they're taking a chance by going for lower price comics, lower quality comics in terms of printing, but uh, I thought I'd give them a try. Plus, they're all miniseries, so it's not like I'm trying to commit to a new universe or a line that I'm not really that familiar with. Uh, Over at Fantagraphics, we already talked about women's comics, but uh, I want to point out a couple that I'm getting. Um, first is How to Read Nancy. The elements of comics in three easy panels. And um, I've talked in the past about the first um, the first uh, MCBA two-day con. We had Dennis Kitchen there, and he held forth on how brilliant a comic strip Nancy was, and I didn't like the comic strip. I preferred the comic books, which were done uh, by by different creators. But he convinced me to become a Nancy fan. So I'm looking forward to this. It's a very scholarly book on the art style used in Nancy. And then on the other page, you know, there's the uh, Don Rosa Library, and also Daddy Lost His Head and Other Stories. It is another of those EC reprints. This is all Jack Kamen stories. Jack Kamen is not one of the artists that people, you know, wowser over at EC. But he's one of my favorites for a specific type of story. A story about a pretty girl doing terrible things to a man. And the reason they would give him these stories, you know, the evil wife or the evil mistress or, you know, uh, because he drew beautiful women. He was he was excellent at drawing contemporary scenes of people in contemporary clothing. His women were beautiful. He was able to set mood. Um, it's uh, how much here? Thirty dollars for 192 pages, and it's a little smaller than a regular comic, but it's you know 30 bucks for a whole bunch of EC stories because the EC stories were about seven pages each. And if you've heard me talk about EC and you're curious about the type of stories that they did, these artist-focused books are a great way to get it. Uh, The Jack Davis book, the Graham Ingalls book, the Wally Wood book, because they focus on one artist. Here's the stories by this one artist, rather than buying an archive, which is, you know, five issues for 50 bucks. Looking to see what else is here. Well, in Oni, I picked up the Whiteout Compendium. 
uh, Whiteout is a critically acclaimed yes. Eisner Award winning graphic novel from Greg Rucka, Steve Lieber. I believe it takes the two mini series, the two graphic novels, puts them in a single issue. Uh, and for 20 bucks, 240 pages, I thought that was pretty good. In terms of comics, of course, I love Xander Cannon's Keiju Max. He's on season three, number four. Pick it up as issues pick, and, and, you know, enjoy the letter columns and the, and the different comments or just pick it up in book form. If you like Godzilla, you'll just love this. And I'm picking up the miniseries Dead of Winter, which is Kyle Stark's Brian Hurt. I'm sorry, he did the cover art. Gabo, I guess, does the art with cover. But it because the atomic, the zombie apocalypse is keeps coming on and on. The heroes escape, and of course it has a dog wielding a sword, which is good enough for me. His name's Sparky. He gets a samurai sword. What else? What else? I mean, come on. Sparky gets a samurai sword. And I'm not big on zombie books. I just thought that maybe be a different twist to it. Uh, Titan is uh, starting a new Fight in American series. Fighting American was... Uh, oh, it's about series. time Rob Liefeld got another job. No, Rob Liefeld's not involved. Oh, well. Fighting American was a character created by uh, Jack Kirby and Joe Simon back in the 50s because they you know, didn't own Captain America. And the difference was with Fighting American, the first issue they took kind of seriously, but then they just kind of started making it goofy. So you've got Kirby's kind of weird 50s sense of humor. Um, when 50s heroes find themselves in a modern world, how will they handle what society has become? So, um, there is a Art Balthazar cover, which is the one that I will be ordering to give this one a try, because I'm always going to give a Kirby creation a try. But if you've never read Fighting American and you want to know what Kirby's superhero stuff was like in the 50s, they do have the trade paperback, which reprints every story, including ones that weren't published. Their uh, comic book company went out of business in the 50s, and there were some stories that weren't published until the 60s when Harvey actually published a reprint that had uh, new stories in the back. And good luck finding that bad boy. But uh, trade paperback reprinting all that, that's really, you know, that's some Kirby goodness. Um, a new Tank Girl miniseries. Love me some Tank Girl. Love me some Tank Girl. And uh, over at Tomorrow's, uh, yeah, I just buy all their magazines. Yeah, yep. Well, I don't buy Draw. Draw, if you're an artist, you need to buy Draw. I'm not a comic book artist, and uh, I, I'm i not as enthused about the behind-the-scenes stuff on how the artists put together their pages. I'll listen to an artist talk about it, but I don't want to read it. But if you're an artist, Draw is a fantastic magazine, not just for the interviews with the artists, but also um, talking about the tools and the things they use behind the scenes and a lot of really good tips. But... Uh, Back issue 101 is the Rock and Roll Comics issue. Uh, Joe, they've got an interview with uh, Sam Jones. All right. I always pick that one up. Although, there's one that I we, we passed over that I'm picking up, speaking of people that are, haven't drawn in a while. Uh, back in Devil's Due, Lark's Killer, which I believe is a seven-issue series. Uh, and... It's written by Bill Willingham, art by Mark Dos Santos, but Will uh, Bill, I should say, is doing cover C, so he's actually drawing one of the covers. And I know there's, if you go to Comic Book Legal Defense Fund, you can get the rare and often inflated uh, variant. I've seen it for like twenty bucks about town. They're selling it for ten bucks. And of course, this is one of those again. For some reason, I'm missing number two. Number one came Joe, in my look, box. Look, look what else is on that page. Zen the Intergalactic Ninja. I've seen, I, I, This comic has been around for like 30 years, and I don't know of anybody who's ever read it. 
I, had the I don't even remember you having out. it in the shop that often. Uh, there was a couple zero issues. <laughs> but really, for me, that was a lot of... Uh, that was pretty much the stuff that I was interested in. Uh, I always looked through the books and magazines. There were a couple of Marvel... Um, a couple of Marvel novels and a Star Trek novel that I'm buying. And even though the Star Trek... No- not Star Trek, Star Wars novel. And I hope the Star Wars novel is good because uh, the Star Wars novels, since they did the reboot, have been kind of... Um, Meh. Uh, well, some are good and some are really bad, but they're doing one of Ahsoka. And uh, that's a character that I really like. And uh, hopefully it's a good novel. I'm also getting the two Marvel novels, even though they're listed as young... Young adult novels. Young adult novels are basically just novels that don't have sex in them anymore. Because, you know, Harry Potter were young adult novels. Yeah. So, now that we're done with previews, and we've already done the ads, we, we could talk about uh, Stephanie. Sure. And Dave. They've, they've got a podcast on this here network. And you're listening to it, right, Joe? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm listening to it. Okay, and uh, here's them talking about it. Scrabbling across the West, a fortnightly retelling of Dave and Stephanie... Wait, fortnightly? That means every two weeks. I know what it means. What if we wanted to do it more or less often than every two weeks? <laughs> well, that wouldn't be holding down the fort, would it? Oh, you're funny. Okay, how about frequently? All right, I'm good with that. Okay. Scrabbling Across the West, a frequent retelling of Dave and Stephanie Kofel's adventures in traveling, making music, and playing Scrabble across the Western Hemisphere. It's all about the people, the places, and the game. Scrabbling Across the West. Bye-bye. Bye. And guess what else is coming out this week, Joe? This is a busy week here at the Podcast busy, Central. Busy, busy. Busy, busy week. Um, we've got uh, new Bad Advice with Wolfie and Corey, episode five. So that's still going. Which is nice. And uh, Derek Coward will, will say I'm a liar because I have lied about it for a couple of times. But nope, this Friday novel cast, <laughs> the uh, sixth part of the uh, pro wrestling mystery novel will be out. And it will be resuming its biweekly schedule. And uh, when we get to freaking and geeking, I will explain how I know that that is true. Uh, And and, and after we do all the plugs for my stuff, we do plugs for Joe's stuff. Joe, tell us about the next episode of uh, Solo Joe. Uh, Hold on, hold on. It's going to be... Ah, I'll sit back, take a drink. I'm, 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 I'm all set. Well, you know, every time I try to think of one for Corey, he just poo poos it. That's what kind of taskmaster this guy is. What? But I figured... You've never come to me and said what you should do with the, with the solo show. I had an idea, and you're like, eh, do it yourself. So that's Yeah, that's how I do a lot of this stuff. Yeah, well, I don't need to know about your sex life. I'm just talking about podcasting here. But in all seriousness, you're not probably going to get a podcast. My sex life is do it yourself. Because, you know, everything I'm working on is trying to get all my vast accumulation of crap under control for Fall Comic Con. Which will be October 7th, 2017, at the Minnesota State Education Building. Corey Freeze, he's a bit of a spudhead. But if, if Dan's going to be there, no, he'll... It's a Corey Free zone. Go enjoy that. I am not there. So you will be happy. No, no, I, I am not, because then I have to answer the questions. Where is Corey? How come Corey? You know what you can tell him? You can tell him he's down in Illinois doing dishes. Why doesn't Corey come to the cons anymore? Because he's uh, doing people's dishes. Uh, uh, folks, so I'm Tom traveling the world Corey doing with dishes. Tons of requests to get his ass out of the compound and get there. You know, and I think that's the weekend too that uh, Half Price Books does that big book blowout at the uh, grandstand. So it, it's kind of a double threat. And they do theirs Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So Friday go to Way that. People eat. Saturday go to the con, and then Sunday go back to uh, the thing again. Way too people 
but the the long drawn on answers is once I'm done with Falcon, then I'm actually I've got a couple uh, podcasts lined up, and I might even let Corey guest star on one since he was nice enough to invite me over to his. But I'm, I, I invite I'm in people to everything. Studio. That's the thing. I, I'm just an inviting fool. I mean, come on, we're going to have Adam Vermillion on, and uh, we've had Dan on. We have guests from time to time. Uh, we're building up quite a little cast of characters, aren't we? Yes, just ask Reginald. He's working on his own podcast. And I keep trying to get Stephanie Cafell to show up, but no, her and Dave yeah. traveling around, recording their own podcast. Someone, someone who doesn't do you know, she's just, she is like Dave's number one groupie. I know. And her and his agent. Yes, it's a good thing. And, and I think they're sleeping together, but I don't. I don't want to cast aspersions. Well, they're married. One would hope. Yeah. Wait and, a minute. And, and they have mentioned it on the show. Oh, okay. Well, we're good. Me, I'm just. I'm just sleeping with my tablet. No, you talked a lot about because usually I fall because usually I fall asleep while reading Marvel Unlimited. Well, it beats your giant size man thing. That's for sure. I keep my giant size uh, man thing with me at all times. You never know when I want to read about Glob. And after Joe's uh, talked about his uh, podcast, uh, did you, anything on the Ebays or just too busy? I was congratulated as being in the top 10% of collectible sellers. Ooh, so, you're a big deal. Uh, well, you know, that's just their way of saying keep up the good work. You know, they're kind of like... You know, the mafia behind you. You know, they want to take a piece of the action. So, you know, you figure, and yeah, this little hint of the, the first podcast I think I'm working on, you know, talking about the Ebays because people are asking me questions on it. And I think, you know, maybe I should just put my vast accumulated wisdom down for the ages. I've talked about it in the past, but. <laughs> wisdom. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, your wisdom. Well, let's take a look here. I've done over $75,000 in business. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I can't complain too much. And, of course, I will make the offer again. It's not public yet, but uh, starting probably in September as I start weeding through my collection and taking stuff that I really don't like and tossing it into the, uh, the, the Falcon sale, which, of course, will be October 7th at the Minnesota State Education Building. In September, I'm going to go 50% off because I'm going to be blowing stuff out, moving things that just ain't selling into my vast accumulation of crap for the Fall Comic Con, which, of course, will be October 7th, Minnesota State Education Building, you know, mcbacomiccons.com for more information. But for you, our cherished listeners, they're cherished. They are. And if they see something they're interested in, and I just spent today putting on about 25 different things, which means uh, they might even be there by the time this podcast drops because what I find is happening as I put up new stuff, it tends to sell and turn over faster. Part of that why eBay is saying, hey, congratulations, you're doing a good job. Keep up the good work. So, But, I, again, I'll be blowing stuff out. And if you see something you want before I make the sale public, and let's see, where's September dropping? They're talking – uh, let's see. We got a couple more podcasts before I'll make it official. But you got two weeks if you see something. Either make an offer, drop me a note saying you listen to the podcast, or just send me a note saying, "Hey, can you? You know, I listen to the podcast. Can I get this at such and such a price?" A lot of, there are a few things that are either on commission or that I'm sorry, consignment or things that I just paid way too much money for. Fish Police One. I'm looking at you. Who'd have thought it would go down in price? I'm shocked. Everybody. Shocked, I tell you. <sighs> so just go to KRAYZ or go back to the middle of the podcast when we drop the sponsors and go to the Solitaire Rose website. You can follow the link there. Uh, go to the little blue box door. It's a box, but it's a door. And that will bring you right to my uh, page so you can uh, browse through it and uh, decide what uh, – what if anything I have that I could make yours? And as usual, I'll toss in a little extra something just because that's the type of guy I am. Well, it's about time you became that kind of guy. I, well, you're not. I figure somebody's got to give. Give till it hurts. Yeah, give. I don't give anything. 
I give till it hurts. Give and give and give. Yep. As long as Corey can hide on the interwebs and avoid that interpersonal contact, Corey gives, gives, gives. <sighs> I, if you want interpersonal contact, you got to pay me. Oh, oh we have a tornado warning right now. Oh, you do, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hennepin, Carver, Scott. So if we don't survive this podcast, it or if we Corey's love you very up. much, ladies and gentlemen. Corey's used to me dropping off, but if Corey drops off, we will find out if them Omnibuy will save you. <laughs> Holy cow, you do got some shit heading your way. Well, let's. Oh, we better make this next portion quick before you disappear. <laughs> oh, when you get to Oz, say hi. Tell Dorothy, she'll understand. So freaking and geeking. I lost my giant size man thing. I'm sorry. I, I, well, I should, I should say I was bidding on a giant size man thing omnibus and an infinity gauntlet omnibus. And I granted, I put on what I thought I could afford. And, of course, then afterwards I ended up getting a commission from Pat Broderick. So I'm like, wow, that's really going to wipe out my money. But I didn't lose. I mean, I lost, like, by tens of dollars. The Infinity Gauntlet, I guess I'm not too worried about. I'm, I'm hedging on the bet that maybe, like, Corey, you said, do you think maybe with the next year movie, maybe they'll reprint it? That's my oh. hope. Uh, otherwise, I'm still looking for one. The, the Man Thing one's just something I wanted, and that was going for a pretty decent price. <sighs> I'm also waiting for my... Jonathan Hickman man thing. The, the tracking number doesn't seem to track anything. So. Uh, Jonathan Hickman Avengers. Avengers man thing. Whatever he wants. I just, whatever it is, the number <laughs> I got from the book guys ain't going anything. <sighs> oh, oh, well. And there's a thought in my head that as I slowly wade through my vast accumulation of crap that I may not make it to Fall Comic Con. October 7, 2017, at the Minnesota State Education Building. Oh, and why is that? Because I got way too much fucking stuff to go through. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing when you're going through something and it's like, eh, you know, I'm never going to read this again. Or, you know, I got issues. She was 1, 2, and 12. I guess I'll just get rid of them. Many series that I've read that I'll never read again. But I got so much stuff that I either never read that I want to read. I have never read any of Peter David's X Factor. I've got them all. Never read them. I just like Peter David. I just figured one of these days I'll sit down and read them. You know, and that's a lot of books. I mean, that's almost a long box in itself. So I want to just, and they're not really valuable. They're not really worth anything. I mean, maybe a couple might have like a first appearance of somebody. I just, I, I just, I'm kind of getting in a quagmire, but I'm, I'm hoping, I, I said I'm going on vacation after this year's podcast. Just sit back, think about it, come back. You know, there's a lot of things. Well, I don't know. When I'm eBaying stuff, you know, I'm not making hundreds of dollars, but, you know, for if I can get three ninety nine for a book I paid half price for, I'm a happy boy. Here you go. So who knows? I, I They haven't sent out dealer invites as of this year podcast, but when they get them, I'll have to commit to it quick if I'm going to do it or not. Uh, if not, well, then you got another year. Listen to me, shut and jive the eBay. Actually, you got that anyways because I decided to keep the store, like I mentioned, and I haven't even gotten to all the other stuff. You know, I mean, I'm looking here. Here's a couple, uh, some of the odd things that fell out. Uh, I've got, do you remember with the death of Superman? There was uh, stamps with it that you could cut and lick. It's like a shield and then all the Superman people. I don't remember that at all. Yeah, that came out of the black bag. Uh, if you remember the Vampress Lux, Luxura, I have the Chrome uh, promo card from her. Luxura was one of those vampire 80s books. From Wizard Comics, I've got a uh, Marvel Wildstone Battle of the Century, they call it, a Fairchild versus She-Hulk. Somewhere along the line, I picked up from Pocket Comics, a little tiny planet, Watt. And again, if I recall this right, this was just little tiny comics you could buy for like quarter a piece. Let's see, Illustrated Communication Corporation. Uh, they don't actually have a uh, copyright date on here, so 
Uh, I have an Avengers card holder priority ID card. Uh, you might remember this one, Corey. I got a couple of postcards from Change the Shade. The, ch- <laughs> Change, Change the Shading the, Man. Change the Shading Man. <laughs> Chasing Madness Across the Map, 1990 miniseries. Shade the Changing Man, one of the promos. I got two of their Started postcards. Started as a miniseries, but sold so well they made it a regular series. Yep. So I've got little things like that that just pop up. And sometimes you run across things that are, are worth a lot, like if you have any of the George Prez cards that he did. The post card Prez. From about the same time, eight, 1984, a lot of his things went up in value. They had a whole set of them, and, of course, Batman wasn't included, although they published it, because I think the Batman rights were for somebody else. So so I'm just not sure. Uh, I'm still working at it. I mean, the last couple of days, I did, you know, I had originally, my wife and I were going to go on vacation, and then she had to stay behind for work, and the event we were going to got postponed a week cousin reunion up in uh, North Shore. So the last three days, I've been just wading through this stuff like crazy. With a few breaks, which we'll talk about in geeking. Corey, what are you geeking on? What's got you thrilled beyond belief? Uh, I haven't done my freaking. Oh, well, see, that's something to freak on. Let's start with that. Corey's always geeking. I'm telling you, you got to keep an eye on this guy. What you freaking on, Mr. Schrode? Tornado warning for Scott County. Tornado Wait, warning Scott. for Carver County. And where are you? Carver County. You know, I can't even see the map because it's just a blob of red. <laughs> and you know what's funny? Before I, I went to bed, or I should say before the podcast, I took one of my news naps, mostly because I've been up since 3 in the morning, you know, going through comics and stuff. And then I I got up early this morning and continued. And then uh, I was like, damn it, i got to sleep. Or I'm going to fall asleep for three hours and not do the podcast. And I was watching. And the, that's, the, my, the, that's my that's my gimmick. Know, there's gimmick and gimmick infringement. infringement. And I was watching, and I said, "There's a tornado down in such and such. It was west and south, down by like north of New Ulm. And uh, but the, it doesn't look like anything else is going to happen. <laughs> Boy, I guess we they fooled us, didn't they? So, uh, well, I will say this: I'm glad I'm not at the group home because we'd be in the bathroom. Dorothy, Dorothy, it's a tour. Maybe you get a. You, maybe you should check your phone, Corey. We need you to come in and help people into the bathroom. No, no, no. I left my phone in my bedroom so it could charge and uh, we don't hear it during the this year podcast. Um, well, hang on, give me their number. I'll call them. I'm pretty much exhausted. I've been doing a lot of evening shifts at the group home. Not as many sleep shifts, he said, as he did four last week. But they've had me in last week. It was pretty much every evening except the one that we podcasted. And then I was in uh, Monday and Tuesday. We're recording this year's podcast on a Wednesday instead of Thursday because Joe's uh, bailing on us. And, of course, when I bail, then Corey decides, I'm going to go have pizza with Adam after talking to him for a year. Damn Damn right. right. I want my pizza. Um, but, But I'm exhausted, and a lot of it is, you know, you get home. I get home at 10, and I have to kind of rush to go to sleep. And if you ever have to rush to go to sleep, you know that doesn't work. That's when you turn and you look at the clock. If if I go to sleep right now at this very second, I'll get seven hours of sleep. Then you can't fall asleep, and you can't fall asleep, and you turn and you go, if I fall asleep right now at this very second, I'll get six hours and 15 minutes of sleep. (laughs) I'd rather go into the group home... Because there, it's like, oh, okay, I you know, go here, and my body's used to that. But to work and then come home and go right to sleep is very different <laughs> from, you know, kind of hanging out, slowing down, calming down, and then, you know, driving to go sleep somewhere. So I'm, I'm kind of tired. Um, and also, I haven't had time to read a lot of comics. That's why I don't have a lot of comic news and comic stuff to talk about. Uh, so... Uh, yeah. Joe, what are you geeking on? Well, I got good news for you. And that is? The tornado warning has been canceled. I saw that. Yeah, and the uh, yeah. horrible storm they, that you might even be able to hear uh, on my microphone because it was so, so the rain was coming down so hard, has abated yeah. somewhat. Yeah, they said there, there's still a tornado watch, though, although not for me. So yeah, I don't pay attention. Again, once again, he's watches. being very selfish and keeping all the fun weather to himself. Damn right. <sighs> uh, let's see. 
Well, I was talking about the weekend, and uh, on Saturday, my wife and I went to the state capitol. And if you excuse me here, somebody's making noise. i got to investigate. Talk about yourself. Here's the topic. Uh, Six million dollar man. How much would he cost today? Uh, three fifty. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, for all the people who really like the song uh, "Surf and Bird," I much prefer "Papa Umau Mau." Is where they got the "Papa Umau Mau" from, but it's just a song about a, a guy who. You know, dude, no matter what they ask him, his answer is pa 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 uma mau mau pa pa uma mau 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 pa pa uma 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 mau mau. So, after so many years, the Minnesota State Capitol was being renovated, and they finally finished it. So they opened up the entire bloody thing, including like the uh, Supreme Court judges. Uh, what do they call it? Where they go back, the liberation room, the, the rooms where, like, the the senators and representatives, I mean, you couldn't go in them, but you could kind of peek in and see where these guys go back to make their secret deals. My mm-hmm. wife and I went, we explored the place. We actually found in the in the basement area, they had this area where they, it used to be the old dining room where, like, the reps could sit. And then there was a door that was open, and inside there was the, this is where, original Supreme Court judges would go to eat. And they were, like, segregated off from everybody else. They could close the door, and I imagine they could keep talking. Cute little room. Nothing in it except the way it was presented historically. Uh, That was kind of cool. Got to go into the uh, governor's office, you know, the same see the podium where, you know, he's always up there making pronouncements and things, and I I got a picture of myself uh, doing my best governorship impersonation, and I probably won't uh, ever be invited to be back there again. Uh, one of the things that was cool is when you went outside, we didn't take the tour. They, they have these uh, uh, golden statue up high. You can take tours to actually go up there, but we decided not to. And what they were doing, though, as we went outside is you could go and you could get a piece of the marble that they – removed from the Capitol and replaced with the same Georgia marble that they made of this stuff. Essentially, they they part of the restoration, they removed it, or if it was weight, you know, not holding weight, they had to uh, use a computer and scan it, and then they got a new piece of marble in there and did their tuck work, and then they beat up the other stuff, so we each got a little piece of the Capitol, the actual, and I've seen this over and over, when the cathedral, which is right down the block, replaced their copper dome, they actually cut up the pieces of copper and ended up selling them kind of as a fundraiser. So I thought that was kind of neat. But now let's see how good Corey is at history. Corey, Minnesota Capitol Dome, 14 million pounds of self-supporting marble. Is it the largest self-supporting marble dome in the world i'll give you a hint it's in the top four i don't believe it is i remember watching um a nova episode about one in europe that they were the whole episode was how did they make this yeah there are only four in the world actually uh number one is is probably the one you saw in saint peter's basilica yes and they couldn't – they had scientists in to try and figure out how did they get it up there. Yeah, 138 feet. The Minnesota State Capitol is number two at 87 feet. The Taj Mahal is number three at 58 feet. And then the Rhode Island State Capitol is 50 feet in diameter. So they're fairly rare, and we've got one of the only four in the world that are like that. So it's kind of cool. The building's open for regular tours. If you've never got a chance to do it, it's kind of fun to see. Also down the block is the the uh, St. Paul's Cathedral, which is another beautiful building. If that cathedral was anywhere else in the world, in Europe, it would be like one of the most highly touted and visited. But because it's in the Midwest, Minnesota, how do we know? Well, we know how to make cathedrals. That's for damn sure. Got a lot and of Catholics. Unusual because it's one of the few, if not... Well, I can't, it might be the only cathedral in the world that doesn't have a crypt in it. Crypt being is where they always bury the old bishops. 
in this case, we have a cemetery out that uh, that's where they bury him. So two really beautiful historic buildings side by side. So we visited that. After that, we went down to Irish Fest, which is down in Harriet Island. Just an excuse for drinking, food, uh, music. Uh, of course, thought of Corey right away because they had just these rows and rows of vests. That's where I ended up getting my uh, my uh, curly whirly bars. Uh, my wife and I were kind of in a daring mood. I dared her to buy me a kilt. She didn't. No. But uh, I'd have worn it. You know I would have. So we walked around there for a while, had some beer. It was fun. On the way home, stopped at Candyland, which, although they were celebrating their 85th uh, anniversary, that was actually the day before. We just went in and loaded up on uh, candy. Oh, good stuff. So, yeah, I do occasionally get the hell out of here and uh, and do things not comic-related, believe it or not. But back to comics, uh I just a couple of things as I as the biggest problem I have going through my comics is stopping to read the damn things. <laughs> you know, I was going through the the uh, oh, who's the new Nova? I can't think of his name. Sam uh, Ryder. Yeah, Sam. I, I have his run, so I was reading it. And of course, the storyline I have where he meets Beta Ray Bill because Sam made the mistake and went up and let some slavers go. And then Beta Ray Bill got wind of it, and he went to Earth to find out what's going on. And, of course, unlike most times, it wasn't a big superhero fight, but Sam realizes he effed up, and he's going off with Beta Ray Bill to fix it. That's the end of the storyline, because at the time I just stopped reading it. And it's not on Marvel Unlimited yet, so uh, I'm kind of bummed about that. But I did read a few uh, Back to Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man with Peter David, issues 14, 15, 16, have a three-issue story arc where uh, I think her name was Deb Whitman. Yes. She, she was a bespectacled young lady who uh, Peter, there was kind of a will-they-won't-they they relationship, and I don't believe they did. But no, this because is back- uh, Bill Manlow did a story where she went uh, she went nuts. Cool, 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 cool. And in this story, she comes back. Apparently, she's written a tell-all book that's been spiced up juicily by the publishers. Phew, that never happens. And this is, of course, after Civil War, but before One More Day, where they recon out everybody knows who Spider-Man is. So, of course, everybody knows who it is. She knows who she is. And Peter goes to confront her. Well, at the same time, the vulture decides to make himself known. So there's quite a quite a battle royal between him, the vulture, there's some uh, good moments at the end. Uh some really good I mean this is back it was kind of fun. Flash knew who he was, Betty Breed Betty Brandt knows who they were, so it was kinda of, it was an interesting three issue read under the Spider Man Unmasked series. Going into the dollar bins though. And then By the way, Joe, do you remember why she thought she was crazy? I don't. She thought that Peter Parker was Spider-Man. And then, of course, to find out that she he was, and then, you know, she wrote kind of a book, being therapeutic, and it got all spiced up, and blah, blah, blah. So, it was actually, it, it, it was kind of a fun thing. Of all that run of Spider-Man Unmasked, I think Peter David's stuff was the most fun, because he had to deal with getting fired from his school. He had a final showdown with J. Jonah Jameson, you know, this run that I talked about. Uh, not that it matters. It was all reconned, or was it? We just don't know. I found a one-shot thing, She-Hulk, The Long Night. And let me flip it open and see who wrote this. Oh, no. Whip this out. Todd DiZago, Brian Hitch, Paul Neary doing the art. Oh, different people did it. Uh, <clears throat> just a quick story. Basically, one end of Deep, deep under New York, a bunch of evil scientists are working on Dragon Man. And things on a subway one side, She-Hulk's on the other. The experiment gets away, blows them up. They're trapped. Dragon Man isn't. Just a fun one and done in one storyline. Uh, not fun enough to keep, but uh, still, you know, it's going to be in the dollar bins. Come to Falcon, pick it up. And the last one I went... Red was uh, another Peter Parker Spider-Man. 
I believe what they were doing was Spider-Man's 50th anniversary, so they decided just to tack on another issue at the end of Peter Parker. This one's kind of interesting. Peter Parker and a uh, a reporter, I don't know if she's been around or not, named Nora from uh, Daily Bugle, they go to investigate something at the warehouse where Peter confronted the villain that killed his uncle. And, of course, Peter basically blitzes away because of spider sense going on. She thinks he's a coward. Interesting point in there when uh, she is confronting Peter. Peter takes off. And then uh, Robbie Robinson ends up telling her that, you know, Acme, that old building by the bay, didn't everyone tell you? That's where the police cornered the man who killed Peter's uncle. And, of course, she has a double take. Well, there was something going on there. And uh, you can go dig this up because it's in the dollar bin. It's not that big a deal. Fun little story, done in one, which proves you can do things, done in one. And this one, I, I it's on the fence. I don't know if I'm going to hang on to it or not just because it is kind of fun. Unless you think all we do is read preview catalogs, comic books, I did actually read some books. Well, actually, some graphic novels. Uh Wonder Woman by George Perez, Volume 2. Uh, I think I might have blabbed about this in the past, and I finally finished it. But, you know, it's just it's so much fun because she's a warrior. She's a little innocent and naive about the world, but still not someone to be trifled with. Uh, a good, I don't know, anything Perez did. I, was he doing the art there? No, or was Len? Let's see. Ah, uh, yeah, Brian Boland. Yeah, the whole point. Uh, we... Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, Kurt Swan, Ross Andrew, Art Adams. So there was, there was. Uh, I think what it was is they did an annual as well, Wonder Woman Annual One, and that's where all the different art styles came in. But for most part, this was pure Prez doing the whole thing. One of my favorite online strips I found a volume two, The Devil's Panties by Jeannie Breeden, and I'd drop her website if I could find it on the book, but. Uh, you know, I'm sure if you put in Devil's Panties, once you get past all the porn, oh, Devil's Panties dot the Devil Panties dot com, not satanic porn, but kind of a slice of life about a, a young lady that, uh, at this point in time, she's uh, in a comic store. She's trying to create comics. She goes to different cons. Uh, just a lot of fun. Continually doing it online. I, I catch the new feeds on the Facebook. And I finished the book, Rowdy, the Roddy Piper story. And I think I talked about that before. Uh, this was the one that was finished up by uh, his son and daughter. So if you're uh, if you like the pro wrestling books, you know these these are three books that uh, I've been talking about on and on before. Uh, good news because I have Amazon Prime. And they're doing Good Omens on Amazon Prime. Good Omens is the book by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. And they said it was David Tennant and, oh, darn it, who's the other gentleman that are going to play the uh, angel and demon in that one? Uh, Bill Bill Baggins. Nope. He's already booked. Oh. Believe me, you don't want to cross sell. What's his name? Oh, dang it. Who'd have thought that uh, computers update by themselves? Oh, nope, that ain't it. Although I did see the link to the uh, the David Letterman Howard Stern show, so there's that going on. So anyway, they just announced the show's coming, so I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, I'll be going on vacation, and by the time I get back and by the time we get the next year podcast, I will know what my schedule is. So uh, that drama will be interesting. We'll, we'll take bets. You think it'll be geeking? You think it'll be on freaking? Well, we'll find out. Well, the way things are going probably in a couple weeks, since I don't get to have pizza with anybody. So that's pretty much it for geeking. What you geeking on, Corey? I, I forgot one of my freakings, by the way, Joe. Well, that's something to geek about. Uh, did you? Do, are you reading the Spider Men? I will. I've got a spoiler for the second issue. Oh, oh, hang on. I will put my headphones down for a few seconds. Headphones are down. All right. Um, remember at the end of uh, Spider-Man number one, 
where Peter Parker came back to our universe and looked up Miles Morales on Google and then went, oh my God, and that was the end of it? Well, we find out what he what he saw in uh, the second issue of the new Spider-Man miniseries. Uh, nothing. Michael Sheen. Sheen. He's the other one in Good Omens. Oh, okay. So I was able to look that up while you were uh, ranting. Uh, geeking. I, I, I mentioned that uh, I'm, I'm going to have a little more spare time. I have let the group home know that I can no longer work evenings. And there are two reasons for that. One is I am burning out. I could still do the sleeping overnights because I like the sleeping overnights, especially with winter coming. Let them pay for the damn heat. But uh, I am now taking a class. I'm actually taking two classes, but uh, I am getting... Uh, SEBS certified, which is certified um, employee benefit uh, certification. So I will be a certified HR benefits person, which will mean a, a rather hefty raise at the full-time job. But also, when you have that certification, uh, if the economy goes bad, they would much rather hire somebody who's got a degree and is certified than somebody who's just got a degree. And the company is paying for the class I'm taking. Now, the other thing is, because this uh, class costs the company a lot of money, they really want you to pass the uh, certification test the first time. I would think so. So I am also taking a class online, which is learning how to learn. You know, and you forget that. I mean, that's that's one thing I know when I, when I, and I tried to tell my daughters that when they're bitching about school, you're not learning facts and things like that. You are learning to learn. And if you do that and remember that, and the thing is, it's like any skill. If you don't use it, you lose it. Yep. And if you go over to Corsica and put in learning how to learn, it is their most popular free class. Millions of people take this class every time they offer it. I am taking it currently. And what it is, it's about how to organize your notes, how to do all that stuff that I have not done since I graduated college. My learning has been, oh, I'm interested in that. I will read a lot about it. Well, now I need to learn stuff that I'm not 100% interested in and stuff that may go against some of the stuff that I've learned in my job over the last few years. And if you want to read boring, let me tell you about the eight different ways that bene- that uh, medical benefits are paid for. Oh, my God, is that boring. But I'm uh, doing Maybe that. Maybe that could be a podcast. No. Insomnia for people. <laughs> no. I, I would fall asleep while doing it. <laughs> but the other good thing about it is that because I will have evenings free, you know, I'll spend an hour or two a night studying, but I'm also going to be able to get uh, the podcast done a little easier, a little faster. Novelcast will come out on time. Yes, Derek Coward, I am making the promise. Keep him, Eric. Keep him honest, Derek. I can't be the only one. Matter of fact, if I don't put it out on time, uh, I, I, there should be some sort of penalty. No pie for you. I'm not allowed to wash anybody's dishes for a month. No, no, no. You have to share your pie. That'll teach you. Oh, yeah, now I know I'll never. Uh, that now I know I'll never be late. I feel yep. like sharing in kindergarten. And uh, with this uh, weekend off coming up, I'm uh, going to be hiking in the woods. Uh, Joe has told me that I can't bring my phone. However, I need my phone in order to find things because that's <laughs> we live in a world where uh, I I don't have a map. Phone, Which I where am find I? Amazing because I I'm a map guy. Just give me a map. And I'll find my way. Matter of fact, there are times, and we'll be doing this when we're up on the North Shore. Oh, well, Corey and I will be sort of in northern Minnesota. It's like, hey, there's a road. Let's take it. <laughs> Why? Well, because I know where it ends up. Besides, you figure you can't get lost because we got Canada north of us. you got Wisconsin Lake Superior east of us, Dakotas to the west, and Iowa south. So as long as you stay within those borders, you're good. I don't know. There was one time I drove to Chicago. And driving back, everyone in the car was asleep. And there was a detour off the the interstate. 
and the detour, this is Illinois, so they might not have had enough money for all the signs for the detour. And we just kind of ended up where I was out in, you know, farm country with no towns around on a two-lane highway and, you know, no place to stop and get a map. So it's, okay, where's the brightest light on the horizon? <laughs> that must be the largest city. I will just keep driving toward that. And we ended up having to go like like an hour out of our way, and we ended up in the Quad Cities. Oh, I know how to get home from the Quad Cities. But it was like an hour out of the way and all this. And when people were waking up, they're like, where are we? I don't know. I don't know. Don't have any Cooper and I did that once, leaving one of the the pre-Wizard Chicago cons. And we were supposed to go 90 up out of Illinois, and we ended up going 94, which was heading us to Milwaukee. And I'm like, how are we going to find our way back? And I, I said, open the map, let me look at it. You know, which, again, stupid things, but, you know, what did we know? And I said, okay, next exit, I'll get off, take a left, we'll just follow it till we catch 90, which was a long freaking detour. <laughs> but, you know, that that was kind of the thing where it was like, if I hadn't had the map, you know, and the thing with Chicago is just because you exit doesn't mean you can get back on. So you have to right. be really careful. So, and I even have one. You want you want my getting lost in northern Minnesota story? Sure. Okay, same thing. And this is actually neck of the woods you were going to. Because, you know, we I had talked about one of the things you could do is follow the river road up to Itasca. Uh, you could probably do it in a day, but you got to be careful because sometimes you miss the signs that – River Road goes this way. Sign, and sign, you do everywhere is sign. Signs. So we we followed the river road, and then we got to one where it was like, oh, the bridge slash dam is out. We cannot cross it. So I'm kind of like, well, I really hate going backwards. Let's just keep following the lake around. And eventually, as we were following the lake, we ended up on, uh, I think, I forget who the uh, the natives who have the reservation there were, were driving through their land, and the roads got smaller, pavement ended, and I just figured, okay, the lake's on our left if we just keep following the lake, and then eventually the uh, a paved or a dirt road went right, and we went straight, and eventually we ended up on a two rutted road, and pretty soon we had to stop because there was a tree across it. <laughs> I was like, where are we? I said. No idea, because the other thing that was weird is every single sign was shot out. So we backed up, and we I just kept following the same road we are on, and I knew as long as I headed west, eventually I would hit, I believe it was Highway 53. And uh, I will double-check that, because this may be Corey's saving grace for him. And uh, eventually we did, and we found it. It was I knew it, we were in between Park Rapids and uh, Bemidji, and then I ended up going south and found our way back to Park Rapids, which is where we wanted to go. So let me see what the road was. Oh, I'm sorry, Highway 71, which if you really get lost, Corey, you can just take south all the way, and that will get you back to Highway 94. So okay. you got that going for you. Which is nice. Which is, which is nice. Well, believe it or not, kids, you've listened to us ramble on about uh, clothing and fashion and driving. And ooh, did, ooh, did we ooh, talk ooh. comics? Uh, somewhere in there. Okay. And as we say every week, the comic we like the least, we still like better than the comic that you like the most, Joe. So Batman tells me, you know why you can't trust the Joker? Give him an inch and he'll take a smile. You have got to throw that thing away. <laughs> Hit my music. <laughs>